but the intense changes, economic, social, cultural and political, would have a price. For some of the students, the break from the familiar realities of the valley were too much to bear without support. Clearly aware of their role in creating social change, others had difficulty balancing their studies with their activism. I think we had a bunch of individuals that were very determined you know, to, uh, to go through college and, and graduate and become professionals and help the community. I mean, that's what we were trying to do. Um, I think there were others that didn't, you know, that weren't successful. Some people got too involved in what we were doing in terms of social change, that they neglected their classes and their schooling, and as a result, you know, didn't end up graduating. But we did have quite a bit of people that did graduate, you know, from our class. We started realizing how can we help our society, our communities, if we ourselves don't have the tools to do better. We need to arm ourselves with the books and arm ourselves with the profession, arm ourselves with the skills to be very uh, self-reliant and independent and be able then to give back to the community those tools. Their social consciousness, leadership, and above all, their academic achievements would begin to transform not only their own lives, but those of their communities back in the valley. It was um, a turning point in our own lives as students, but it was a turning point in the life of the, of the communities from which we came. The people who came from Topnish, from Wapato, others now began to understand that they could come to the University of Washington as well. And parents began to understand that they could envision their children coming to the University of Washington. I understood what a huge sacrifice everyone in my family was making, and I just saw it as a huge privilege. I mean, I was amazed every day that I was granted this wonderful opportunity. Ultimately, the students of 1968 would take with them two educations, one from their classrooms and assignments, and one of transformation. They would be changed by the university experience, exploring new horizons and new professional identities. When I finally became a classroom teacher, and everything that I had ever experienced as a student and everything I'd learned about, you know, the Latino movement and the uh, African American movement, everything um, made me the teacher that I am and gave me that sense of social justice. They would also change the university itself, helping build programs that continue to support underserved students of all backgrounds, expanding course offerings, and widening the pathways that connect higher education to the rural labor camps and homes across the state. Our responsibilities do not stop there. They keep going until the day we die because we still have people that are in, in situations that they can't believe that they can get an education. They can't believe they can be anything they want to. They're still limited in, as much as we have grown, they're still limited in their thinking of how and what they can achieve. So it's, it's a reminder to those of us that have already gone through that we have that responsibility to come back to our communities. It's been over 40 years since the September day when the students of 68 first set foot on campus. The idealism of youth has given way to decades of experience. Though no longer students, they continue to be change makers through their work as professionals. I think all of us promote the value of education and try to encourage as many young people as we um, know and, and run into, become acquainted with, to set their goals as high as they can and to work now to try to achieve those goals. Reflecting on their days as students and activists and upon the professional lives that followed, a story emerges where obstacles surrender to determination. The realization of personal dreams weaves together with commitment to community. It made us determined. Uh, I mean, all these experiences that we had growing up uh, made us determined that we needed to change society. And when you're young, you're very idealistic. Um, you're you're strong. You think you're invincible. Um, you think you can do more than than uh, than what maybe you can actually. Uh, but you know, we were that way. You know, we we were very strong, and the numbers made us stronger. There is no question that the students of 68 opened the doors a little wider for other youth awaiting the same opportunity. I think I would say, fundamentally, first and foremost, is that there's, there's nothing wrong with failing. There's always something wrong with not trying. 
So long as someone is trying, you're never failing. You never fail. They are a clear testament to the power of the human spirit when given the opportunity to thrive and a reminder to all of what is possible when we dare to excel. It's been a long, a long time coming And Lord, it's been so hard It's been a long, a long time coming Working each and every day Hard work and little pay Trying to live a life of peace And trying to make ends meet And it's been a long long time coming brown children born each day trying to grow and get away trying to live in harmony and trying to get away it's been a long, a long time coming. Yeah, it's been a long, a long time coming. Turning ground upside down. Van de camino los veranos, inviernos y primaveras Cruzando estados y condados y ciudades extranjeras Como las golondrinas van bajo los cielos Dándose vuelo, dándose vuelo de sus anhelos de verdad Van a los piles de la uva, betabel y de manzana Y ahí los niños se la pasan todo el día entre las ramas De sol a sol hasta que llega Dándole flores, dándole flores para dolores de verdad Pero algún día esos niños serán hombres y mujeres Trabajadores, campesinos que defienden sus quereres Y mano en mano tomarán otro camino Con un destino, con un destino para campesinos de